Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. Hey, lovers of small businesses and good stories in general. Welcome to episode 119, we're almost to 120, of Small Business War Stories. And today we have a really, really cool repeat pair of guests, Mike Dalimole and Jordan Gurren, who are the founders and principals of Goodwood NOLA in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I had a chance to catch up with them over the weekend that I was in uh, New Orleans for New Orleans Jazz Fest. And uh, we got to do a little bit of jamming, they're both uh, great musicians, and we sat down and talked about what has happened in their business in the last two years. And if you're a long-time listener of the podcast, we interviewed uh, Mike and Jordan, the founders of Goodwood, uh, two years ago. And there has been a lot that's happened. They're expanding. Uh, they've learned a lot about how to manage their business. They have exp- you know, they, they, they do this custom fabrication of these beautiful commercial and residential pieces. Uh, so these like enormous bars for places. They work with metal. They work with wood. They, and they have a really good vibe and a very uh, cool story. So uh, go go check out uh, smallbusinesswarstories.com while you're at it. Uh, go check out. We have a lot of our historical episodes there. And reach out. Let us know if you have ideas for the show or if you have folks that you think we should interview on the road. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode, number 119, with Mike Dalimoli and Jordan Gurren of Goodwood NOLA in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we are live here in beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. And today I have the pleasure and honor to sit down for the second time with Mr. Mike Dalimoli and Jordan Gurren. Thank you and welcome to the show. Thanks for having us again. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Welcome back to the Big Easy. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a lot. So I believe it's been close to 100 episodes since you guys were last on. Yeah. And it's been, I believe, about about two years, a little bit over two years. Um, and our audience is about a little bit over ten times what it was back then. So we wanted to do a follow-up episode. We've done a couple of these follow-up episodes, which is always cool to see where past guests are on their journey. And uh, cheers. We're drinking some... Uh, cheers. Uh, cheers, yeah, yeah. Clean Hook bourbon is actually... Uh, we got this at a uh, great uh, spirits and wine store called Grand Crew, whom I interviewed today earlier on. So that's another episode that aired last week. Excellent. Awesome. All the good things in the Big Easy, all the good NOLA stuff. All the good NOLA stuff. So how are you guys doing? So a lot of stuff has happened. Um, and uh, the the shop has changed since I was here last. So let's start there. Like what, uh, What's been going on? Uh, you guys, uh, for people who may have not heard your... Uh, initial episode which they definitely should um you guys do high-end fabrication with wood and metal for both commercial and residential applications is that a good way to describe it perfect perfect (laughs) yeah we're a custom design and fabrication studio so basically anything from furniture to retail build outs uh, interior architecture all sorts of stuff like that okay anything complicated that you need to get built custom (laughs) yeah come to us yeah, it's awesome. And you guys, I mean, just to give an example, out in your shop right now, there's this enormous S-shaped bar that's made with, I mean, is it hundreds of little maple strips that are bent? Thousands. Of thousands. Little, thousands of little maple strips. Bent and glued together. I think it's like six gallons of glue. Wow. Um, it's for a nice restaurant that's opening up. So that's, a, that's an example of the kind of thing that you guys do. How, and yeah. how, how big is the whole thing? I mean, it's like 30 feet, right? Yeah, it's, it's just under 30 feet of continuous curved bar top. Wow. Yeah. Made yeah. up of these little sandwiched... Tiny um, little ma- tiny maple little. strips. And that's just one example, right? You guys have all oh, kinds yeah. of funky... Like, what are some of the funky projects you guys are working on right now? So, let's see. Right now, we're building furniture for a bunch of different interior designers. Um, again, something that we like to specialize in is taking other people's conceptual ideas and and kind of bringing them to life um, in a cost-effective and and sustainable way. Awesome. Yeah, and we've been doing some, um, you know, just some of this high-end custom built-in work that's been really great too. Kitchens, um, a lot of the good residential jobs that are a little 
a little more creative than some of the commercial stuff, which has been fun. Yeah. Um, but we're absolutely jammed up with work right now and <coughs> kind of busting out of the seams at, at our current shop. Yeah, there might be a move in the in the near future. Now, even earlier today, and this this is uh, hush hush. We I mean, not everybody don't, knows don't about tell, this. Don't tell anybody. Don't, don't tell the don't, podcast. Don't tell. <laughs> don't tell our thousands of listeners. Uh, you guys were looking at a new space earlier today. Yeah. Right? Yeah, just earlier today, just an hour before we met with you. Wow, and what uh, what are the uh, qualifications, or like, what are the things you guys are looking for in the new space? Well, right now we have about six thousand square feet, and yeah. the rule of thumb in furniture studio is a thousand square feet per person. So at the moment we're maxed out. We have six employees, so including Jordan and I, that makes eight of us, and so. And the total uh, is 6,000 square feet? 6,000, yeah. So needless to say, the two of us are on our computers most of the time now because um, the business requires that of us, but also we just don't have much more space. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of busting out of the seams and uh, the work is pouring in. Um, we're also starting to make some deals with franchises and, and trying to expand with other companies that are also in, a, in an expansion pattern. So um, all of that really lends itself to much more space being needed. Wow. So that's all like really promising stuff, right? Now let's talk about, um, <clears throat> you were mentioning, we, we did a little bit of a musical uh, soiree here last yes, night. Yes, we did. We did a jam. Yes, we did. With, uh, <laughs> jam session. Yeah, Always. Se- seven or eight of your closest friends. and uh, We did it two years ago. We, yeah. got, we did it this time. Exactly, exactly. But uh, one of the things you were talking about is um, you were, I mean, so, so you have your 6,000 square feet uh, and you're, 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 you're looking to expand even more. Um, but and one of the things that came up in the in the, the last time we spoke is that you were doing more, tackling more of the business front of thing end of things, and you were tackling more Jordan. So Mike was doing more of the business end, and Jordan, you were more here in the shop. Are you because you have so much stuff you do? You say you're both spending time a lot of time on your uh, on the business side of things. Does that mean that you've had to step away a little bit from actually uh, you know doing stuff at the shop all day? Yeah, I mean, there was a moment we had, I guess almost a year ago, that it was kind of a, a reckoning where I recognized that I was getting in the way in the shop and I needed to just step out and not be in the shop too much. I was doing a little bit too much micromanaging, which I hate, Yeah. Um, and just kind of having my hands in too many things. We were, we were working too much day to day and just trying to complete small tasks that I would give people. Yeah. We weren't focused on big picture stuff. So we had a pretty serious conversation and, uh, you know, I decided to really step out of the shop and focus a lot more on growth of the business systems and processes, you know, really taking all the information that we've gathered over the past five years and putting it in one place so that as we bring new people on, they have a, an easier time kind of getting acclimated and so you're planning for info. more growth then right so so the goal is is being in the shop less allows me to have the time to estimate projects and and really develop our systems and processes which yeah. are a lot of work it's just do a lot you, of work do you to do miss that. building stuff i mean i still get in the shop so, okay <laughs> uh, of course like <laughs> not, i have to get hard. my hands dirty and i also focus on a lot of the installations so okay. doing a lot of those installs um you know Clients love to see the owner on site delivering a table or installing shelves. Yeah. It does go a long ways. Um, and they know they're going to get the absolute best product no matter yeah. what. But seeing my face there just is an extra comfort level. And you guys so. are probably doing more sales now than you were two years ago. Oh, yeah, certainly. We're, we're, pro- we've, we're probably, from two years ago, we're, we've doubled our sales. You double your sales. So you were started originally in 2014. Yes. You were on the show in 2017. Mm-hmm. And now in 2019, you've doubled your sales. Yeah. But you were in the same exact footprint. So that's when you mean you're, you're busting at the seams. Exactly. Yeah, same footprint. Um, we are, we're definitely revenueing way more. Um, but, you know, we have I've a, never heard that as a verb. That's a <laughs> we, we definitely have um, more costs as well. Yeah. You know, the types of projects we're doing, we've also started to really utilize all of our different contractors' licenses, and we're subcontracting a lot of smaller components to projects. So for us, it's um, it, what we've realized is that for Goodwood to do as well as we can, we need to have our designs and our quality control, not just on the products, products and projects that we're doing in-house, but also on additional work that we subcontract to other shops so that we can kind of um, spread our wings a little further. How does that work? So how do you decide what to sub, who to sub to, 
what that quality control is, and then at what point do you? So you're kind of running point on this project. How, how does that all work? Yeah, it's we we basically act as a project manager. Um, we work on the designs, all the conceptualization with the client. We run the project; it runs through our license, so we're in charge of it. Um, and instead of our crew doing it right behind the door in the studio, uh, we we have other shops build our designs and and work with us as if they were kind of just working for Goodwood in a sense. But wow. um, which is great, and and we've really we've cherry picked the the shops around town that we really love to work with that that can produce high quality stuff. But yeah. um, at the end of the day, we we want to grow so that we can take all of it on in house. Yeah. Um, it's a better margin that way, and we get you know more control over the work. Yeah, and one interesting thing that's happened since the last time you were here is we had twice as many people working here when you were here. Oh, so we have half as many people, but we've done twice as much revenue. Mm -hmm. And that's a four x. Wow. So so what we've really realized is that. You know, hiring good people matters more than hiring more people. And treating treating those people better and allowing them to take more ownership over their work so that they're committed yeah. to the process and committed to the company. Um, and also it doesn't it doesn't hurt that we have a lot of really nice tools now that yeah, we didn't that's, have. Before. That's what it works in tandem with. So it's yeah. just not like our team so what, what our is, team what, before was great, but we had inefficient tools. So what has changed? What new tools do you have? I mean, you showed me some crazy, crazy just like that, that. Bigger, bigger and better. Thing. More industrial grade stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that drill press you showed me yesterday, that's really kind of like a vertical lathe. Yeah, the milling machine yeah. is, is an impressive tool. That's the that's the second most expensive tool in the shop. And it's the, well, no, that's actually not anymore. It was until we got that big joiner. Yeah, we, we have a 16 inch joiner. Yeah, um, massive you know, joiner. And the thing is, is with, with really talented people and really good tools, yeah. you can double the amount of work that you can do because it, it really truly makes a difference yeah. having the right tools. And even yeah. people in their DIY shops will tell you that. And, and you know, another thing I think is, is really important to mention is that the, the fact that we've been focusing on processes and really starting to streamline all of those things yeah. um, from start to finish, everyone that's working here knows and understands the trajectory of their tasks so they get done much faster. Yeah. So instead of us kind of just throwing people at the work that we had saying, oh man, we're busy, let's hire two more people, which is just the worst, most inefficient way to operate a studio-based business like ours, uh, we realized that better tools, better resources for fewer employees actually yeah. goes much further. Did you have to take risks in the sense that you had to invest in tools before? I mean, you had to obviously they have a payback period, right? Like, so you had to like kind of take a leap of faith that these tools are going to pay back for themselves with your processes. How, how did that work? We're in yeah. the middle of that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You're in the middle. Yep. Okay. So we're in the middle of taking those risks now, and uh, yeah. It's yeah. It's, There's it's, lots of money on the table right now, but it's it's, it's scary, worth but it. it's it's worth it. Like yeah. like Mike's saying, you know, we've we've done a lot of thinking about this. Yeah. We've conceptualized a lot. We've really really spent a long time running through the details on the growth plan for Goodwood, and the fact is, is you need more space, better tools, and really talented people, and we can in you know, the office can, and in the studio. In the office and the studio, yeah. and then yeah. we can take that portion of the market share that we want to take, which is about ten percent of the the market share in new orleans that is a huge deal right yeah sweet jesus so right you, now we're how, do you, how do you quantify that so you're looking at like the so total in the total commercials furniture it's, spend so that's a really good question because we offer so many services that we fall under all of these different umbrellas yeah. but if you're just focusing on architectural fabrication and millwork yeah uh, which is really the the biggest chunk of, of what we do um, we're at the moment we're doing about 2.5 percent of the market share for the southern Louisiana region, wow. and so we we our goal is to get to 10 percent market share, and at that point we'll um, we'll kind of readdress everything and take another look at it. And your expansion to the bigger space, how much bigger is the other space? Uh, it's about two and a half times the size. Okay, so we could say 15, almost 15,000 square feet. 16. 16 yeah. yeah. 16,000. So we'll, we'll go from 6 to 16. Okay. And something to remember with that market share too and just to put numbers on it. The market share for this market in New Orleans is 27 million dollars in southern Louisiana. So that's mm -hmm. how much people how spend. Do you, how do you figure that out? Like, is somebody Benchmark like, metrics, okay. internet. Yeah, you you basically um, you have to just research all of these different aggregation companies that take data and, and they just compile data. So your next big milestone is doing $3 million a year in revenue. Basically, Basically yeah. two point six. yeah. And and it's also interesting too because what we do is, is pretty specialized. You know, $27 million for all of what we do. All of the companies in Southern Louisiana do that. For, for perspective, yeah. cabinet, cabinet making is $208 million. 
right? Yeah. So it's a huge difference. So what we're doing is very wow. different from a cabinet shop, right? And I think a lot so. of people don't understand that when yeah. you kind of think about Yeah, there's all these pedigrees and different levels of, like you, you were saying, yeah. I mean, at the risk of uh, 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 maybe maligning some other aspects of the furniture making world, you were talking about people who were like maybe like just pour resin onto tables, right? And, and, you, <laughs> and, and yeah. you were less excited about that. The, well, it's just, a, it's a matter for us. It's, um, you can, you know, you could relate it to like um, cooking or filmmaking. There's all these levels of it. You know, you can take yeah. out your iPhone and film a, your friend uh, skateboarding on the street, but yeah. that's different from, you know, a lot of production value coming out and filming a bunch of professional skateboarders. It's the same, you know, same thing with food. It's, it's an industry thing. And for us, um, what we've realized is that people's tastes aren't changing as fast as the industry is changing. So things like these resin tables and these river, quote unquote, river tables that I'm sure everyone has seen where there's like blue resin flowing yeah. through the middle of the table. They look really cool, but it doesn't really take much skill to do it. So, you, you know, more of them. <laughs> they, <laughs> for us, uh, you know, our team kind of, um, they, they're, they're not challenged by that. So it's yeah. something we want to leave off of the table at the okay. moment, because for us, even if we could make money doing it, we're not short of, of work you know we have these complicated complex intricate projects coming our way so that's that's what we want to so focus 16 on. square feet how in using your model like mental model or i guess your model you that would mean that you would want to increase your staff from six people or eight including both of you to 16. no so we would do uh, we're, we're still trying to work it out but realistically we would invest in even bigger better tools and okay. we would probably bump from six up to ten okay and then we would also hire two to four people in the office and so okay. we would be diversifying the the so, workflow so that we could do more stuff um just more subcontracted work more project management um more design services yeah. instead of only building custom furniture okay. yeah I, I do think that the increase in staff is is important our, our people are like the lifeblood of the business yeah the reason that we're all good at what we do is because the people working here are really good at what they do mm -hmm. um, and we really depend on them to produce really high quality work okay um, you know Mike and I are the only ones in the office right now and that's tough there's a lot of stuff yeah. to do it's and this is we're currently in the office the office, office is a very uh, subjective term because we're basically in a, <laughs> there's a large plexiglass conference table in the middle of a shop here so yeah, basically, <laughs> basically yeah it's a it's a clean space and i'm putting quotes around that okay there's um, no sawdust there's like there's, there's less, 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 less limited less, limited sawdust less sawdust <laughs> less yeah. Dust, yeah yeah you know it's for us where we we still really need to be physically next to the studio yeah. so hopefully one day we'll be able to be a little further away yeah um but we the part of what we do is so based on us being able to have the shop at our fingertips um, to ask all of our people questions, um, to bring clients in and show them progress on their work. You know, it's a very involved yeah. process. It's not a difficult process to work with us. In fact, it's, it's quite easy, but it's involved. You have to be there for design reviews. You have to approve things. You have to come and see material samples. So for us, having the office next to the studio really does wonders. And I think okay. for, the, for the near future, we'll be very close, if not connected to our studio. Yeah, and also the people who work here are not just builders, they're designers. Mm -hmm. So having easy access to the office and to be able to 3D model and draft and design and then go right back into the shop to yeah. keep building really matters. Yeah. It makes a big difference in the, the flow, the efficiencies, the process. It, it really kind of cuts out some middlemen that are present in other kind of manufacturing fabrication facilities yeah. and also so we're talking about risk taking right so this expansion so you're talking about bigger tooling like more this it takes some risk it takes some capital right and uh you want to talk a little bit about you last night you were mentioning that there were some additional sources of financing how do you think mm -hmm. about how you're going to make sure that all of this is funded and that you have the liquidity to execute and all this on this vision so we we have been very lucky that we recently partnered with an excellent uh, private investor who is going to basically give us a debt investment um, into the company for us to grow and expand. So that's taken five years. You know, we've had to prove our worth, so to speak, and the type of business we are. Um, banks won't give us the money that we need. 
and so for us, we kind of had no choice but to turn to private equity. Yeah, that's um, a really common challenge for small businesses. Let's talk about how did you? Yeah, well, banks don't face that. Like banks what? don't take risks on small businesses anymore. It's a terrible thing. Um, the, uh, the the banking atmosphere in the United States has turned into something that's like completely risk averse. And if you have any semblance of being too risky, the banks won't give you what but you need. But don't you have a bunch of machines that they can hold as collateral? Sure, they can collateralize our machines, but you know that's only like a hundred thousand dollars. We don't a hundred thousand dollars would help, but it wouldn't do what we need to do to expand. We need much more money than that. So you know we we don't we're the nature of doing what we do is. Um, it's risk after risk after risk. And so be, being an entrepreneur anywhere is like that. But um, for us, especially considering the fact that most of our clientele is, um, our, our clientele are people that, if there were like a financial crisis, we would be the first thing cut from the list. So, you know, we, we're kind of a luxury. And mm -hmm. because of that, we need to be really careful about how we get our money, where we get it from, and the terms attached to that money. Because, if we were to take bad money, so to speak, um, we could be shooting ourselves in the foot. Even though we know that with the right money, which we were lucky enough to have gotten recently, um, we can make it happen. So that's a really interesting thought. How do you think uh, about protecting against or preparing for a potential downturn, right? If, you, if you're saying that, uh, I mean, you're essentially you've just defined yourself as a luxury good, mm -hmm. right? And as, as something that is, uh, it's not like you're selling um, sugar and flour, right? Um, or gasoline. So what? Uh, what is the? Uh, how, how do you think about that? That's got to be challenging mentally too, right? Like because it is. It is challenging, and it's something Mike and I talk about often. Um, w this kind of great economic growth that we are seeing over the past few years has undoubtedly fueled our business for sure. I mean, it, it's just a fact. New Orleans is a city that is growing. There's a new restaurant opening every week, almost, I'd say. A lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. Hotels, so, retail, yeah. there's so much going so on. So much going on. And and it, it's definitely something we think about. You know, what happens uh, when the market does fall out, when the bottom falls out of it? What, what do we do in that case when people are not spending the money on furniture that they maybe would when they had disposable income? And do we have an answer for that? No, I, I don't think we have a good answer. We're trying to make ourselves yeah. as resilient to it as possible by staying lean, keeping our overhead costs as low as possible. Just operating as a good business in general is is our, really our game plan if something happens. But right. the but specifics tool, of it are- Tooling and real estate are two fixed costs, right? Mm -hmm. That, that don't, don't scale down. As, no, as and you know, we're lucky, we're lucky to have these relatively broad contractors licenses. So if if it really does turn south, we can, you know, have that conversation with our crew and say, hey, look, you know, we're going to be throwing up drywall for a few months. You know, that's like, you know, last resort. But we, we do have that as a contingency. So, um, you know, we don't have a fully fleshed out plan for the market turning. Yeah. And I would actually say that if you if you are an entrepreneur or if you own a business and you do have that plan in place, make sure it's fluid because a, a downturn in the market can go in a lot of directions. Yeah. Um, it's always going to lean down, but it can go in different directions. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure you have a fluid plan. And for us, we have shop space about six hours away from New Orleans. That would be really cheap for us. So that's a good thing that we could pack up in a truck and head up north. Um, you know, in the event of a storm, for example, which is probably the most looming threat to New Orleans. Yeah, yeah I mean, even more than an economic downturn, yeah, we're more sure. scared of a big storm. Yeah, absolutely. Know, and, and we do have a contingency yeah, because plan. This, this is basically like the, the first line of defense against yeah. like Atlantic fronts, right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're at the bottom of the bowl. We're right? almost three feet below sea level where we're interviewing right now. Wow. Yeah. That's low. That is low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up. <laughs> you're the water. You're looking up. Everywhere you're looking is yeah. up from here, technically. And that's a, I think even more than an economic downturn. I think because of our geographic location, our bigger fear is really okay. Here comes another hurricane season, right? Are we ready? Yeah, okay, we like are ready. Four okay. months away. Now. Yeah. Yeah, and it lasts for you know three and a half months every it's what, year. What is it? August to November? Yeah, basically. And um, you know, it's just something that. As we have grown more comfortable living in New Orleans, because uh, you know we're both transplants, we we haven't we didn't grow up here, but 
you know, my view on storms hitting New Orleans is that you just need to prepare and be resilient. Yeah. You know, and, and they are coming at some point. Yeah. Right. It's it's the question is five years or fifty years. Right. But exactly. It's not in weather. Yep. It's, it's one. Absolutely. And just having that comfort level of knowing that we have somewhere to go and we could build furniture. Yeah. In Shreveport, if we needed to, is good. That's awesome. And you know, why Shreveport? Um, so that's where I went to college, actually. Oh, okay. And so I learned how to do some building there at an old shop, okay. and they have a few extra thousand square feet. You know, that's, that's the awesome. plan. So if something happens, we load up a truck, we drive to Shreveport. You know, if it's really bad, if we're talking Katrina level, that's a few months that we're out. Okay, mm -hmm. let's keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. And then when we come back, we can frame walls and do some drywall. But that's, I mean, these are all things Storm as, cleanup. as small businesses, when you start out, you don't really think about. Yeah. But as we've gotten farther and farther into doing business, these yeah. are the really important things. And one of the things that came up in the last episode we did is that you guys are starting to consider selling, and I think you may have, I'm not to refresh my memory on this, like if uh, selling to people in other cities too, beyond New Orleans, right? Yeah, yeah we've done a lot of that. Yeah, so how, how does that, how's that going? And is that is that a double-edged sword in the sense that you have, yes, you can sell to people outside of your geo, but at the same time, all of a sudden, if like people are buying remotely instead of locally, you are also competing against uh, all kinds of other manufacturers, including foreign manufacturers with yeah. cheaper costs. How does that how does that all work? So I, we've been lucky enough to have. Um, out-of-state clients that have really had interest in working specifically with us okay so this is where the artistic side of what we do comes to play so you can go to any furniture shop in the country you could even go to any woodworking or mill shop in the country and they can build you furniture but that's kind of like what we touched on earlier saying do you go and get um, a salad from the airport or do you go and get a salad from you know uh, Whole Foods. It, it, they're both salads, but they're not the same salad. So for us, it's kind of like the furniture we're producing yeah. is going to have that extra little something. We make, warranty. Make a damn good salad. Yeah, make a damn good salad. And, we, yeah, and some people just want a piece of good wood, too. They just want something that that we made, which is, I think, a great position for us to be I, in as I've a business. I've been carrying a, your Goodwood wallet for There you go, now, man. So I have a piece of good wood with me. During our leather, leather goods. And we want to be more receptive to that and be able to yeah. produce you know, smaller goods, which is part of the growth plan for the new space too. You know, if we make that move, being able to take on more of these smaller projects and say, hey, yeah. that coffee table in Denver, yeah, we'll ship it out to you in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and another thing that I think is really cool is that the people working here are, they're all artists in their own right. And most of the people, other than our studio director and one of our employees, everybody's background is in the arts rather than furniture. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we have sculptors, we have uh, painters. Um, so the, to get to the bottom of it, we we are trying to also take a risk on some of these other avenues, exploring these other creative directions like the leather goods. You know, yeah. we, we made a, a run of leather goods that everyone who bought them loves them. And this was three years ago and everyone has yeah. told us they, they still yeah, rock. Yeah, I mean, I still so. give, I tell a story of Jordan literally saying, like, oh, you like this wallet? And then you took out all your credit cards and all your cash. <laughs> There's a little bit of cash in there. You're not very much. Much. All, all those hundreds. Well, all, all, all of it, 100% of it. And then it's like, here, have my wallet. Yeah. And ever since that day, it's in my pocket right now. I've been carrying the Goodwood Nola yeah. wallet here. Look at that. Yeah, Goodwood Trade Company. It's got it's got some nice patina. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it looks uh, like you've sweat a little bit in there, huh? Well, I live, I live in Austin, Texas. That's kind of comes with the territory. <laughs> there so. you go. And be able to do things like that wallet. You know, that's such a fun, creative thing that yeah. Mike and I can do in the office, not be in right. the shop. You right. know, like we spit designs back and forth send it out, get it made by a really, really good craftsman. And then we just have this really great Goodwood wallet. And it's, yeah, it's a little expensive, but yeah. it's a piece of Goodwood that, that you can have in your pocket all yep. the time. And the, know? yeah, the, the, the products, no matter what it is, whether it's furniture, design services, whatever it is, uh, we, we stand fully behind our products. Everything that is physical is warranted for life. Yeah. Um, you never buy it again. If it breaks, we fix it, period. Lifetime warranty. Yeah. Which is a double-edged sword too, right? Definitely so. But right. that's why, you, that, hey, other, other business owners out there will hear me loud and clear when I say this. If you warranty something for life, you know damn well that it's made the best you can make it. Yeah. Because to stand behind something that 
kind of open ended. Have, ha- have you had that uh, come back and somebody bring back something and you'd be like, oh, oh that's gonna be that's gonna take some time. <laughs> it's mostly I would say commercial work, right? Yeah, okay. it's, it's the it's the stuff it's that the commercial gets, stuff that gets beat to hell every day. Yeah, right. You know, and we still offer the same warranty yeah. mm-hmm. on a table in a restaurant as a table in your house and. But that table in a restaurant gets about a thousand meals a day. Yeah, I'm, that's probably a, an exaggeration. Yeah, but it's your fine. table at your house is what, three? Yeah, four? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. You eat a lot if you're responsible <laughs> and eat at home a lot. Um, and you know the lifetime warranty thing is something that has been a, I wouldn't say recent, but relatively recent thing in our business because yeah, a couple we, of years we, now we realized that our quality really yeah. is the best. I mean, it truly is. Yeah. And it's something we value so much. That if we're willing to put our company's reputation and time and energy behind it for in perpetuity, I think there's something to be said there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How has your relationship evolved? So I remember um, a couple years ago. You us? Yeah, you, you, both of you guys, <laughs> right? Because you keep uh, you know, deepening your relationship, getting to know each other with all the good and the bad that that means. Like the, 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 the joyful uh, wins and the disagreements mm-hmm. and how, so how, how are you guys getting to know each other and how are you working uh, differently uh, today than you were two years ago? I'd say we're working more efficiently. We, we still have the same roles in the company. They've just evolved, but they've evolved together. So um, I'm still working more on the administrative side, more on the client side, the design side, and Jordan's on production, um, scheduling, um, procurement of all the materials, which is a massive job. Um, and just making sure that things are getting built and out the door on time and installed and maintained. So I'm more of like the pre-production and he's more of the production post-production side. Okay. So it's really the same. It's just evolved more. Um, and I think we work better together now because we really have our own lanes and and it's clear there's a clear line there okay. and I think just interpersonally we've um, you know after spending five years working with somebody yeah you learn nuances the quirks yeah you learn what to get mad about what not to get <laughs> mad about and like what's important to have a discussion about yeah and what like just let it go you know like that and that's important it's like yeah. some things I'm like whatever like it's fine yeah like, it's all gonna get done anyway and I think that us kind of working together, but also in our own lane, like Mike is saying, is is good. We've we had a good balance, and we also have great conversations when we take the dogs out to the field. Yeah, we just let them run for twenty minutes. Those are some of our best conversations. Yeah. Actually, we're out there. You know, we're throwing the ball at the dog, and we're really diving deep into some issues with the company. Yeah, and that's like a really open, free forum to just like. You know, we can yeah. get as loud as we want and we can say whatever we need to say. It's important to have those spaces, right? It is. So it really I, is. And, uh, yeah. and also with between uh, the busyness of like today's, you know, email and social media world and the, uh, how we tend to clutter our calendar so much, like the, that time to e- either, either talk to somebody else or just think. Uh, that's something that is <clears throat> incredibly valuable, but like more and more rare every day. Right? Yeah. And something that I as you said that you sparked a thought in my head um we have this so social media for us which i'm going to use as a segue um has been really great because we've been lucky enough to have something that i like to think is pretty cool that we're showing people on social media and and those various platforms and so the response to that has been great but one thing it's taught us is that being really true to what you do on these platforms is almost a surefire way to be become more successful. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is all of our com- competition, I mean, I, I say that generally, probably not all of them, but most of them, they kind of portray something that um, isn't real, uh, for lack of a better term. It's just kind of a, uh, you're kind of putting the best of the best together and showing the world that. We try to keep it really minimal, really direct, um, and I think that's done wonders for us because people will come into the shop, clients or friends or whatever, and they're like, whoa, this is like really what I thought it was based off of Instagram or Facebook. And you know, as cheesy as that sounds, it really has gone a long way for us. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of business off of social media. It's really our, it's like the main, the main vein for advertising Do you do any spending us. there or do you mostly? Very little, okay. very little. Mostly organic. Yeah, mostly organic, which has been, again, yeah. really wonderful for us. We've been lucky. 
That's awesome. Yeah. So, and you also have your own little personal Instagram project, which is actually pretty cool. You can plug yeah. it in here. It's uh, what it's Mixter DM. Yeah, <laughs> Mixter DM. House, yeah. house photos. Yeah, you take beautiful <laughs> pictures of. Uh, so New Orleans is incredibly colorful, like the architecture and 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 uh, all the different colors and the way that people organize their houses. And you take yeah. you shoot a lot of photos all, all in New Orleans or everywhere. Wherever I go, but New Orleans is special. New yeah. Orleans is. Uh, I, I did a lot of photography growing up, and yeah. I took a, a really long hiatus from it until moving back here. And so. Okay. For me, it's special. The colors and, and the architecture are special here. Even in, yeah. you can go to the wealthiest neighborhood, the poorest neighborhood, um, the oldest, the newest, and they're all beautiful in their own right. That's it's a awesome. unique thing. It also stimulates us creatively. I think living in such a funky city, yeah. you know, we don't really ever have to worry about um, searching for that next inspiration. It's all around you. You just wake up and open your door, and there's someone yeah. riding their and bike so much like cultural a, intermixing right mm -hmm. so you have a yeah lot absolutely of the, the history of the american south and you have the french influence the creole influence and oh like yeah there's and there's tons of native american influence here as well and also like all the visitors right yeah. so right now is jazz fest so you have a ton of people from outside of the city hundreds of thousands in. of people mm -hmm. coming in yeah it's wild there's it's a well wild. there's this well of creativity in new orleans yeah that's kind of twofold one is that the people who are creators yeah have this energy to tap into yeah. and like really really tap into it and and truly be inspired by new orleans and then there's a takeoff of that which is everybody else who gets to benefit from those really creative people yeah and that's like that's why we love new orleans so much is because not only do we get to be inspired but people are incredibly receptive to that like mm -hmm. young entrepreneurs in new orleans typically do well because the city itself is receptive to that they're saying, oh, what are you doing? Oh, that's cool. I haven't heard of that. Do so you get help from the city, like the city with your initiatives? I'm not saying the city. I'm just saying the city as a whole. Yeah, the okay. people, the community. The, just the population. Yeah, they, they, they see what a small business is doing and they either want to be a part of it or want to yeah. help or want to purchase something. And that's something that is the reason you see all these little Yeah, I'm upset shots. that I don't have a good wooden Nola table. I should, well, okay, well when <laughs> you I have a good wooden Nola t-shirt now though. I do have a t-shirt and I do have a wallet. <laughs> But that's not, that's not, well, we're not talking about table. something here. That's auxiliary yeah. goods. That's yeah. uh, you and the yeah. you and table. We're going to have to talk about that. Um, what, speaking of uh, projects, can you think of any other than the crazy bent 30 foot bar? What other yeah. funky projects do you have in the pipeline right now? So, right now, we are working on a couple restaurants. We're working on uh, two locations for a really cool fitness franchise right now one in Florida and another one in Louisiana So this will be our third location with them in Louisiana um, Florida and then Georgia is next and then hopefully if everything goes well, we'll go all over the country with them um, We're working on additional projects for the folks at crew um, crew to optic is a great client of ours um, We've been building with them now for about three years um, so, you know, again, local businesses working with local businesses. That's that crew, are, that's K-R-E-W-E. Yes, right. and they make actually, they, awesome sunglasses. Yeah. I'm wear, wearing them right now. Yeah, actually, and the, the other interview I did during this trip is uh, Grand Crew spelled that same way because that is, yes. crew is a reference to the Mardi Gras. The Mardi Gras. So yeah. what, can you talk about a little bit about that? Just Mardi Gras cruise. That's just the traditional spelling for a Mardi Gras cruise. So that's a collective of people that are in the different crews that yeah. parade on different days for different. Do you guys participate? You guys build stuff for Mardi Gras? I don't know. No. Uh, that's a that's a that's old a whole, world. A whole different old, thing. That's a whole different thing in the oh, world. Yeah. There's, oh, a, yeah. there's a whole like industry around. Oh, yeah. that. and there's they're good at it and just yeah. let them do it. I mean, okay. we, we would not be able to compete in that realm. They're <laughs> so they're so good at what they do. Mm -hmm. um, really talented artists make the, all those Mardi Gras. It's clothes. a very different kind of yeah. building. So Jordan and I both started in scenic fabrication. Well, actually, J Jordan started in props in the film industry, but oh, I started wow. in scenic fabrication. So. That's a lot more along the lines of scenic work. So it's a lot of foam, it's a lot of paint, it's a lot of different carving. types of uh, really intri yeah, intricate carving and cutting. Yeah. Um, not that what we do isn't like that, but what we do is really furniture and furnishings. Um, that's a whole different beast. Wow, it would be fun though. We we would do it if someone <laughs> if someone wanted this. That's us. not yeah. off the table. No. Well, sure. you guys should do your own float. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. The Goodwood good 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 crew good float. Yeah, the Goodwood crew started. There you go with the folks we're jamming with last. It's funny. Night. I've I've ridden in the crew of Ferret, which is actually a relatively new crew. They've been around not that many years, and they just like basically were like, "There's no crews with young people that 
are like from this little Ferret area. So they just did it. Yeah. And now it's like a part of the whole Mardi Gras I, thing. I think, yeah. I'll, I'll come back. Yeah. I'll come tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We can yeah. fill the, the Goodwood crew. Hey, man, you can be part of, you could be one of the yeah, leaders of the, of the crew. crew and I'll, be, uh, I'll play the guitar. On yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you got us going on the jam sessions again, yeah, too. Yeah, that was good. Is great. That was good. We were playing what, it seemed like it seemed like 10 minutes, but I think it was like three hours. It was like three hours, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was really like 10 of us. 10 minutes, though. Yeah. It's hey, that's what's nice about having a big warehouse, you know. Yeah. When you want to play instruments, you move the tools aside and you just jam. Yeah, and there are no neighbors. You should have seen the face of the Uber driver when they dropped me off here last night. <laughs> oh, because like, we were playing already. No, he's like, are you sure you know where you're going? Oh. Like in the middle of an <laughs> industrial neighborhood on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, we're so in- industrial over here, but it's actually a pretty safe, nice. Yeah, yeah it um, is. At yeah. least compared to our older. But at the very least, it was called some questions as to what I was doing here on a Friday night. I mean, your first, yeah, your yeah. first Uber canceled, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true you, most Uber drivers aren't taking people over here. Well, we, we love this area. It's centrally located. You know, our, the new spot we're looking at is in the same exact area. Awesome. So um, it's all, we, we like where we're at. New awesome. Orleans is just a great city. And Let's remind our audience where they can find you. So your social media handles and your website and so forth. Yeah, so goodwoodnola.com. Uh-huh. On Facebook, it's just backslash Goodwood Nola. Facebook.com backslash Goodwood Nola. And on Instagram, we are at Goodwood Nola. So it's nice and easy. There you go. Hopefully, you'll start getting those wallets in again because I'm pretty sure yeah, people man. buy those. Hey, I uh, I still rock mine, and it's in good condition. It's been dropped in the water. It's yeah. gone through the wash. It's it's ready to go. Yeah, and make sure. I mean, we did hang out uh, a few months ago when you were back in uh, Austin. So yes. make sure uh, yes. you know, when you guys come to Texas. We'll uh, Absolutely. I had a great time with you, sounds man. Sounds good. Well, Awesome. Mike. Nice to see you Jordan, again, Pablo. Pablo. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you so good much. Good to see you, fellas. And uh, yeah, best of luck. We'll do another one Thank in two you, more sir. years. Love when, it. Uh, Love and it. And then, you know, much bigger space. Yes, sir. <laughs> Take care. Safe travels. Thanks, Pablo. Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes.